Chapter 5. Startups. I was 27 years old, and I had just spent nearly eight years of my life studying and learning how to traverse life on my own terms. On the morning of my final exam at Yeshiva University, I felt the weight of those previous 15 semesters on my shoulders and in my mind, and I knew that I was about to face a new test. How would I put all of that knowledge to use? The exam in front of me was almost inconsequential in comparison to the challenges that were coming. For my entire life I had been a student. Now a new chapter was waiting to be written, and I was finally ready to build my own empire. I returned home from the exam at 11.30 a.m., feeling a strange sense of freedom wash over me. I was done studying, completely done. Everything I had learned and accomplished stretched out behind me in my memory, and I felt like I had sucked New York dry. Suddenly, before I knew what I was doing, and without saying a word to anyone, not even my friends or roommates or parents, I started packing my bags. I only grabbed the essentials and left the rest behind. Within one hour, I was on a bus heading to the airport. All I knew was that I wanted to completely smash that reset button and start from the ground up. In order to do this, I needed to go somewhere I had never been. One place in particular came to mind. Throughout college, I spent my free time between studies watching Entourage, and the California depicted there seemed like my kind of place. Naturally, I knew absolutely nothing about the real California. I didn't know where San Diego or Los Angeles or San Francisco were located in relation to each other. I had no idea what the culture was really like in each city. I didn't even know if I had any friends or connections who lived there. I had never even traveled anywhere on the West Coast, but none of this deterred me. I was heading to California no matter what. So, when I arrived at the airport with my one duffel bag in hand and $320 to my name, I asked the airport clerk to book me on the earliest and cheapest flight to California. She was confused, but in the end, she put me on a flight to San Diego for $149. Just like that, I was on my way, and I never looked back. From that moment on, my focus was set on founding my first official company on the West Coast. I never returned to New York City. One downside of deciding to move across the country at the last minute, with nothing but a few hundred dollars and a small bag of essentials, was that I didn't have a place to stay. I realized this mid-flight, and using the crappy airplane internet service, I searched Facebook for any friends who lived in San Diego. One result appeared, a connection I had made while networking in New York. I reached out to him on Facebook right away, asking if I could stay with him for the first few days until I knew what I was going to do. His response came almost immediately. Mike, my couch is yours, buddy. All of the pieces finally came together. It felt like fate was playing out in front of my eyes. This feeling of euphoria and freedom continued even as the plane landed in California. Everywhere I looked, I was surprised by how closely my new reality matched what I had seen on TV. Here, it seemed, everyday people really could be glamorous. For the first time, I saw the beachside mansions and breathtaking mountains of California with my own eyes. I felt drawn in by the relaxed lifestyle and intelligence of the people who now surrounded me, and I celebrated their big dreams, even as I looked towards my own. New but not unfamiliar California was a land of potential filled with inspiring people and places, and I connected with it instantly. It was far from New York, and worlds away from my childhood in Montreal. Here in California, I was finally free to pursue my own ambitions and make my own life, once and for all. Once I arrived, I set out to create my new companies. And yes, that's companies, plural. I already knew myself well enough by then to know that one single career was never going to be enough for me. I craved fast paces and impossible odds. Yet, I also knew that I was never going to be able to stay put anywhere for long. My experiences with ADHD, my jump in interest from breakdancing to computer science to mathematics, and my recent sudden departure from New York had taught me that I couldn't limit myself or be tied down to any one location, even if that place was as beautiful as California. Instead, I was determined to self-manage my career, just as I had managed my education. I began to construct a portfolio career consisting of multiple businesses, sometimes spanning two or more industries. As I focused on establishing my career, I built up a new routine. I rented a room at Chabad of San Diego State University, SDSU. My first companies were created in the coffee shops in and around the SDSU campus where I spent my days. I named them Hexatiger, a website design and development company, and Hectofox, a website hosting company. As I formed the foundation of these ventures, I took inspiration for the future from my morning runs along the La Jolla shores, which finished at the top of a mountain with a breathtaking view of the ocean. The houses that lined this route are the most beautiful I have ever seen in my entire life. Seeing how other people lived in these beautiful places, I realized that if they could make a glamorous life for themselves like this, then so could I. It was as if the next step to my journey had been laid out, 
With this future in mind, I set my mind on a five-year plan and posted it on Instagram for the world to see. As of January 1st, 2019, I have five years to own a beautiful house on the mountain by the beach of La Jolla Shores, San Diego. This house will have an entire floor with only glass walls, so I can be consumed by nature while immersed in my lifelong dream to provide significant contributions to our understanding and reversal of human aging. This floor will be divided into two sections. One half of the floor will be reserved for my software projects. The other half will be reserved for my biological research. To achieve the goal above, I must spend the next five years becoming an expert in the biomedical slash biotech domain. It's imperative I leverage my backgrounds in math and computer sciences to approach my bio training in an unorthodox and diverse manner, providing an advantage when attempting less obvious solutions. Eliminate the need to compromise on my goals due to financial necessity. This requires that I create well-established, self-sustained businesses where I can achieve reliable income with minimal effort, allowing myself to effectively apply my time and effort towards my scientific goals. Build up my brand and network so that I can have valuable resources at my disposal. This requires that I engage with systems that provide high quality content with a strong social reach. Due date, January 1st, 2024. What's your five-year plan? As I write this book, I am still on the path to achieving my dream, but every day it is more in reach. My portfolio career is booming. I continue to manage my first two companies and have created a handful of others, including daily news websites and another that provides free resources to people studying for the GMAT. I maintain a schedule of my own choosing and travel as frequently as I want, but my eyes are always on that five-year plan. I know that to many people this five-year plan sounds impossible, but I have been here before. I look at it the same as if I was back in college again, studying for the SATs in two weeks, or learning 16 years worth of basic mathematics knowledge in order to get through Calculus 1. I know I can make it because I've come to learn that success and hard work is reproducible. All you have to do is follow a plan. My plan doesn't require conforming to a 9-5 schedule or being confined to a cubicle. I know now that I do not have to change who I am or suppress my ADHD in order to achieve my dreams. My approach to life revolves around engineering solutions that open up possibilities rather than limiting them. And the best part is, I am not the only person who can live this way. You can break the 9-5 to schedule and engineer a better solution for yourself too. It all comes down to a few simple steps.